Introduction to Governance, Risk and Compliance, also known as GRC. Our objectives here will be to cover the following points in this section. First, understand what GRC means. Second, identifying authorization risks in the business processes in an organization. And learn how the SOD concept has evolved to manage risk. This opening cha chapter takes you on a top to bottom tour of GRC to help you understand in greater details what GRC means and what companies are doing to lower the costs and create new value. The goal of GRC is to help a company efficiently put policies and controls in place to address all its compliance obligations while at the same time gathering information that helps proactively run the business. If done properly, GRC creates a central nervous system that helps you manage your business more effectively. You also derive a competitive advantage from understanding risks and choosing opportunities wisely. In other words, GRC helps you make sure that you do things the right way. Thus, it keeps a track of what you are doing and raises an alert when things start to go off track or when risks appear. Most companies now face demands from regulators, shareholders and other stakeholders. Financial regulations like SOCs in the United States and similar laws around the world meant that the senior executives of a company could face criminal penalties if financial reports have material errors. All of this means a lot more testing and checking, which is costly without any form of automation. Now let us identify what business risks can be there in case authorizations are not controlled by taking an example from purchase to pay process. For the purchase to pay process, the following transactions are required. ME21N for creating a purchase order. MIGO, M-I-G-O for posting goods receipt. M-I-R-O for posting an invoice. In case of uncontrolled assignments of excessive authorizations, the user might be able to perform the following steps and initiate a fraud. How can he initiate a fraud? First, a person creates a fraudulent vendor with a private bank account using transaction XK01. Then he creates a purchase order by transaction ME21N and enters an invoice for the purchase order by using T code MIRO. Then he hides the missing goods received by maintaining a GR clearing account by transaction MR11 and sets the delivery complete flag by ME22N. He then releases the invoice, which has been blocked because of quantity differences by performing MRBR. And finally, he executes the payment run by T code F110. Let us take another example from the payroll process. Payroll process deals into initiating the following creation of salary statements. Payment of salaries to the members of personal. Posting of all relevant information to financial accounting and controlling. As you can see on the screen, the payroll process contains the following steps which needs to be separated from each other. Steps like run payroll simulation done by the HR team. Release payroll again done by the HR team. Run productive payroll performed by the HR team. Prepare bank transfers using preliminary program for data medium exchange done by the finance team. Use the payment media workbench to create a payment file for the final bank transfer done by the finance team. Here if authorizations are not properly controlled and duties are not segregated, a user could exploit this vulnerability 
to realize a financial gain by performing one of the following conflicting activities. A user can modify payroll master data such as salary information by performing PA30 and then process payroll by performing PA03 and PAUX. Similarly, a user can change employee HR benefits and then again process payroll to improve their own financial situation. A person can easily modify time data by PA63. He or she can enter false time data by PA71. A person can print salary statements to printers to which unauthorized persons have access. Now let us here understand few key terms which are most often used during SOD implementation. SOD would stand for segregation of duties. Let's start understanding what is a business process. For example, order to cash, purchase to pay, record to report are all types of business processes. All risks and functions are assigned to business processes. What is a business risk? A business risk is a potential problem at any, enter any enterprise may encounter, which could cause errors or irregularities within the system. What is a business function? A business function identifies the tasks an employee performs to accomplish a specific portion of his or her job responsibilities. This can be analogous to a role in SAP, but more often a role comprises of multiple functions. What is actions? These are simply transactions in SAP. To perform a function, more than one transaction may be required. What are permissions? Permissions are the authorization objects in SAP which form as part of transactions. What are risk rules? Risk rules are possible combination of transactions and permissions for a business risk. What is a rule set? A rule set will categorize and aggregate the rules generated from a risk. When you define a risk, you attribute one or more rule sets to that risk. The graph here shows the architecture of a business risk. Basically, two functions, for example, creating a purchase order and posting invoice, are defined as a business risk. The business risk is called SOD required between creating a purchase order and posting invoice and it says that these two functions should be segregated properly. Hence to understand better, business risks are a combination of two business functions which shouldn't be performed by one single person. One or more business risks can be categorized in a rule set which is required to run the risk analysis. To manage risks, SAP has developed a three-phase approach to risk management. By applying this method, it is possible to implement a process for segregation of duties, SOD risk management. From the figure, step one is risk recognition, where we identify authorization risk. Here we approve exceptions. Here we classify risks as high, medium or low and identify new risks and conditions for future monitoring. Step 2 deals in rule building and validation. Step 3 is for analysis by running reports on roles, SAP roles and SAP users, end users. Step 4 is remediation. In this step, risks are eliminated by selecting corrective actions. Corrective actions could be 
to modify or create a new role or modifying a user assignment. Step 5 is mitigation. Controls are put in place for managing risks by implementing a process to monitor risks. Step 6. Step 6 is continuous compliance. Continuous compliance can be maintained when changes in roles and user assignments are communicated to the business owners and alerts are implemented to monitor risks.